But we could. There we go. Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Mark. And it is Sunday. It is August the 20th. We get ready to kick off our School of Thought program on the day, which is going to be taught by Brother Yosef Indra L. As you all know, if you've been listening, this brother drops some powerful information. He kicks the science. All right, I'm not just saying this because he is my cousin. I'm just telling you this information that this brother is passing will literally cause you to evolve and will change your life. I know this. I'm a former Christian, and he has helped me grow spiritually, and I give praises unto the gods, you know, and our ancestors for my brother being in my bloodline, you know, and um, helping to assist us to evolve. And on today's subject, my brother will be talking about, go ahead, Joseph and Joel, kick it for him, let him know it's good. How y'all doing, family? How y'all doing? Yeah, this is, uh, today we're going to be talking about um, life after death, and we're going to be talking about the ancestors, because, you know, these things all go in together with each other, and um, it's very important, very important for people to understand. But before I start talking, I just want to let people, for people who don't know, uh, Dick Gregory died today, you know, one of our great ancestors. Oh uh, man, he, he's a blessing. He's a blessing. Uh, so if y'all can throw him a few ashes today throughout y'all day, and uh, one of the best ways you can honor your ancestors, and I'm gonna go into this deeper a little later, is through something called libations. Okay, this is started in Africa. This is an African uh, thing that they do to this day for the ancestors, and to prove that it's inside of our DNA, you got brothers that used to stand on the corner and they used to pour liquor out for who? The ones that wasn't here. There you go. Where in the world? Where That's in the right. world did they get that from? Exactly. Where in the world did they get that from? They had no knowledge of that their ancestral heritage, but they knew for the people that are here, they need to pour out some liquor or pour out something for these people. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's an actual ritual that's connected to your DNA. So if you guys can today, if you have a plant in your house, if you don't have a plant, just go outside and there's some grass and take a bottle of water. It don't matter what kind of water it is, if it's in a plastic bottle, glass, whatever. Pour some water out. For the ancestor, uh, Dick Gregory. Call him by his name. Say Dick Gregory and say the word Ashe. Ashe means power. Uh, so you're actually uh, saying may, may power be on him. And uh, through those through those uh, through those Ashe's, Dick Gregory can go up a little higher in the realms. You know what I'm saying? Which is how we all go. And also, let's uh, let's acknowledge uh, Brother David, Brother David Miller, also. Uh, brother, sister, he's on here with us. Brother David Miller is also one of the co-hosts. So I definitely didn't want to overlook my brother here, a.k.a. known as the Black Sheep. Brother David Miller, mm -hmm. go ahead, man, and continue what you're getting ready to say. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Black Sheep here, you know, thanks for um, bringing me in. I'm sorry. Uh, and you know it, King, no problem. Shout out. Yeah, shout out to all the bougie babies, and, and shout out to the grassroots babies. Y'all saw me a lot this weekend. But yeah, mm -hmm. man, it's hard to hear, hear about Dick Gregory passing. That's Mr. Huh? Huh? Like, dang, the way he's yeah, saying yeah. it, you <laughs> think about what he's saying. You must think when you say it like that. Huh? So that's what I get yes. from brother. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. So so very powerful brother, great elder of ours. He's seen it he's seen a lot, man. We talking about a brother that was around, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, sat down with these brothers, can I mean I can. I have a friend of mine that actually went to see Dick Gregory one time. You know, I I was actually never able to meet Dick Gregory, but I can just imagine sitting under him and listening to his words and 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 just the knowledge coming from that type of ancestor that's seen so much. You know what I'm saying? So we definitely, if y'all can today, pour out some water for for our brother, our ancestor, Dick Gregory. Um, Dick one Gregory. The, so one of the best, one of the best secret society big decoders. Yes. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. The coder on a lot of things, uh, yeah. how to have a good good health, and that's why I'm so surprised he passed away. To be as old as he was, uh, Dick Gregory was in great shape, you know, great health. You know, mm -hmm. he was uh, very energetic. You could see the way he talked, and he wasn't sagging. You know, he looked like an old man, but he his energy his energy was very high. You know, yeah. So you know, we just sent a few ashes to him today. So today, uh, my family, we're gonna be talking about life after death. Um. 
once again, y'all going to put on y'all big boy, big girl britches out there. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I know that uh, some of us have Christian ideologies, and, you know, we've been raised Christian, we've been raised Christian, and we have a certain idea about life after death because we were taught that, right? But like I always tell most Christians, we have to understand that the idea of Christianity, they show you this in the movies and everything else, the whole concept of Christianity was created by Europeans, and it was forced on you as a slave. So nine times out of ten, most black people in America are only Christians because their parents were Christians. But we have to understand that's a thing that goes back hundreds of years, 400 years to be exact. You know, we're going on 500 years actually now. Um, but 400 years in a, um, you know, of this constant cycle of this being impressed on your consciousness, you know, pushed into you. So some of the things I'll talk about today is going to be a little hard to grasp and understand. But if you search deep inside yourself, you're going to know it's true. And you're going to feel that tingling feeling saying, hey, there's something deeper out there. I know it, you know. And this is one of the reasons why I left the uh, Christian church. So, <clears throat> yes, I'm going to start out just talking about, uh, you know, we're going to start out talking about what, what, what happens when you die, and then we're going to go into uh, the ancestors, and I might mix them up in between. Hey, yo, so let, 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 me, um, let me add something in there real quick, man, before, you know, you go into it. Um, peace and blessed brothers and sisters, those who listen, and um, this is not by any way, shape, or form or fashion you know what I'm saying, knocking your religion. We just want to bring some light to things that you may not be aware about. So um, I want to share some things with you because I believe in giving you book chapter first. Uh, I have some evidence here, you know, they refute us uh, talking to our ancestors. So uh, if you go to uh, Matthew chapter number 17, verse 1 through 3, um, allegedly um, Jesus was communicating with Moses. Now, mm -hmm. allegedly, Moses had died. That's Deuteronomy chapter number 34, verse number 5. He communicated with somebody who supposedly had died. All right. Now, Jesus supposedly had died and he was resurrected. Luke chapter number 24, verse 1 through 51. Now, allegedly, Paul had spoke with this Jesus, all right, who was supposedly had died and was resurrected. Uh, mm -hmm. Acts chapter number 9, verse 4 through 5. So for those of you who are listening in, you know, you come from that background, you know, I want you to meditate on that for a minute. Go back and research that and uh, look into what we're saying to you. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. That's yes, all sir. I have. So, okay, okay. All right, yeah. So <clears throat> it's very important that the first thing I, I, I want to get into people's mind is that you know, it's a certain reason why I practice spirituality and why I constantly push myself, regardless of what's going on in my life, to grow spiritually. You know, one of the main things I do is I honor my ancestors. That's one of the main practices I do. Um, and the reason why I'm saying this is because we have to realize one thing, and that's consciousness. For all those who don't understand what consciousness is, consciousness is simply being aware. Um, most people are aware of things only on a physical level. Um, they talk about the physical level. They deal with the physical level. And you know what? That's, that's fine. That's okay. But we have to understand that one day all of us is going to die. I don't care who we are. We all got to leave this place one day. And the problem is we focus so much on the physical when it's time to go. Everybody's scared. You know, everybody's scared. I remember uh, the... the, the uh, Steven Seagal movie, uh, I think it was uh, Mark for Death. I don't know if y'all remember that movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, yeah, one of my favorites, you know. Nobody want dead. There you go. He said he said it so deep. He said everybody want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want dead, which means don't nobody want to die. <laughs> you know, you can't get to heaven no other way. So when you think about something like that, what really is death then? What is this thing of death that we are afraid of? You know, is mm -hmm. death a bad thing? Absolutely not. That, death, is right. simply, death is simply the portal that allows you to transition from one dimension to the next dimension. When you have dreams at night, you are in a state of death. That's why they call sleep what? The cousin of death. Because sleep is very close to death. So everybody dies to a degree when they go to sleep at night. That's why you have access to your dreams. 
And, I, you know, I was talking to somebody yesterday about dreams, and I always tell people if dreams are fake, if dreams are not real, then why do you experience them? Why do you remember them? You know what I'm saying? And why can't you just make up a dream right now in your head? Very simply, because your consciousness is aware of the earth realm as we speak. So I just really want to get people an idea of what consciousness is, because this is going to, what's going to help you when you pass away. Whatever level of consciousness you have when you die, that's kind of where you end up at when you pass away. And we're going to get deeper into that. So our ancestors, the Egyptians, all they did was focus on the spirit realm. They actually merged the earth realm and the spirit realm together. That's why you'll see what they call the Netaru, which are also looked at as the deities of Egypt. The Netaru had earth elements to them, and they had spiritual god elements to them. They were one of the few societies and cultures that were able to mix the elements with the gods. You know, They were one of the few cultures that were able to do that. So what I'm trying to say here is every human being, when they're able, they need to study something spiritual. You need to get the idea in your mind of God's angels, not just from a biblical perspective. You need to read all the religion's perspectives and all the spiritual system's perspectives and make up in your mind which one in your heart you feel closer to. Because where your mind is is what, where you go when you die. And we're going we gonna, to, you ever hear people say, I see you in hell. Well, to a degree, those people really kind of go to hell. Now, I'm going to explain that in a second. So what usually happens when people die is if you didn't believe in any, let's give for example, let's say an atheist, right? An atheist, he don't believe in God, he don't believe in nothing. His consciousness is dark. He only focused on something that is really an illusion, which is the physical world we live in. So when his astral form takes over, his spiritual body takes over, he goes to a realm where there's nothing. There's darkness. And the truth of the matter is, hell is cold and heaven is hot. Y'all better believe me when I tell y'all that. Heaven is tropical, beautiful, light everywhere. Hell is cold and it's hot. I used to experience this earlier in my spiritual walks. And when I went to go see Master Gibson at a lecture, I actually heard him say this. And I was just blown away. And I was like, oh, my God, I, I knew it. I knew it. Hell, if you, the idea of hell is actually a cold, dark place where millions and millions of people walk around doing nothing. They're lost and they're stuck in their mind based on what they did when they died. So if somebody committed suicide, if somebody died in an angry state, you will see people in hell walking around talking to themselves still angry. You know, one time um, when I've seen uh, uh, the hell-like states, I've seen... A woman walking around looking for her kids. She's looking for her children, but she killed her children. She killed are her are children. Talking, are we talking temperature or feeling of cold? Temperature? Because you know what you're talking is It reminds me of a movie called Avengers. When these big ice guys opened up a portal. I can't hear you too good, hey, brother. brother Dave, you got to move to a better uh, location, brother, because you come in broken. You sound a little far away. Yeah, I can hear you a little better. You sound a little far away, though. Oh, man. I just, when you're talking about being cold, can you hear me better now? I can hear you a little bit better. All right. I just was thinking about the movie Avengers when the ice creatures came to the Earth land. Um, that was pretty much a gang of giant evil people in a dark place. Yeah, brother, brother, brother David. Uh, yeah, you still you found you sound very far away from the mic. I can't really hear you too good. Okay, am I better? There we now? go. There we go. Yes, right. sir. Sorry about that, you guys. Um, I just was reminded of the movie Avengers when when they opened up a portal and all those creatures came into Earth and they had to fight those guys. They came from a cold, dark place, and that's uh, the character Loki's original place. And then Asgard was the place of light, and they rode their rainbow place, I mean the rainbow bridge to get to Asgard, but there was a cold place. And the cold people were always angry in the darkness, and they wanted to take over every round. So yes. for the people that are having a hard time imagining, this is what came to my mind as yourself is described in heaven and earth, uh, hell. Yes, very, very good point, very good point. Um, um, and, and it's good to read that mythology for people who didn't read the uh 
Asgardian mythologies and a Norse mythology. That's really what it is. Nor Norse mythology. That's spelled N O R S E. The Norse mythology. And you'll get read about Odin and Thor and all these guys. That's mm -hmm. a great mythology to get into, um, because <clears throat> to a degree that exists for certain people, and that's a good concept. That's a good idea because, in that part of it, hell. I mean, the hell-like states in that movie was cold, and that's exactly how it is now. Is it snowing and freezing? Not exactly. You don't see snow. You don't see ice. But it's, it's bland. You're walking on something. It looked like sand to me. You know, you're walking on something, but there's no life there. There's no trees. There's no mountains. There's nothing there. Mm -hmm. And it's just pure pitch darkness. You could hear people, and you could hear people crying and moaning, but they're walking around stuck in their own mind. Some people are just standing there. They don't know what's going on. Those are people who mm -hmm. just died. You know, maybe they were good people, they helped people all their life, but at the end of the day, they had no consciousness. They focused so much on helping people on this earth, which is a good thing, but they never mixed that with spirituality. So to a degree, they have no idea or consciousness about what else exists out there. And that's the problem. You know, that's the problem. So when you die, you go to the level of consciousness that you have. That's what happens. If you didn't study nothing spiritual, you don't you don't get nothing spiritual. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's kind of how it goes. Now there are some people who practice religions and who are who are into religion, and they they look at religion as more of a higher spiritual realm. So so they do their consciousness is a little bit higher than a regular person in religion. They they really believe they have a connection with God. They really believe that there are greater heights. Some people are just in church to listen to the pastor. Yes, sir, pastor. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Don't really get nothing out of it, but for the few that do, and they really in their consciousness, they believe in a higher level that this is what it is. Sometimes they do make it to the astral plane, but they're still on the lower levels. Now, what do I mean by that? That means that they actually go to a, a Earth-like state on the on a spirit. And we're all, we, we're talking about um of uh, the astral world. The astral world, and it has different names, is basically the world that everybody goes to when they die. There are many heavens. There are many versions of hell. Okay, I've seen some things I don't want to talk about on here uh, in, in hell-like states that people was going through. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I have seen people burning, but they put themselves in that state. You know what I'm saying? They put themselves in that state. But like I was saying before, I saw a lady walking around. She killed her children, and she killed herself. And she's walking around there frantic and stressed out and crying, looking for her children, and she's stuck in that state. She can't even see. It's dark. Some people been down there so long, they skin and their energy just look brown. Their whole body look brown, you know. But the good thing about it is nobody stays there forever. Eventually, what tends to happen is angels and different um, entities come down there and they grab, they get souls out of there and they take souls out, you know, souls that have been there for a certain amount of time because nobody is meant to suffer forever. No soul is meant to suffer forever. So basically, those people get a chance to do it all over again and try it all over again and get it right the second time. So what you don't want to do is die in a state of non-conscious. You don't believe nothing. You don't know nothing. There's people in church. I hate to say this, but it's true. There's some people who are Christians that don't know the Bible, and they're 50, 60 years old. They don't even know nothing about the Bible. They just go to church. They think they get points for going to church. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't know no yeah. scriptures. They hardly know who Abraham was, they don't know his son. They don't know nothing, and this is the truth. Mm -hmm. 50, 60 years old, and all they do is just sit in. Those are the people I'm talking about that go to a hell-like state when they pass away. Mm -hmm. A hell-like state. They stuck in darkness, didn't know nothing, don't want to know nothing. So they get a chance to do it all over again. So <clears throat> to a degree, that's what hell-like state, that's what happened to some people. Now, people who are spiritual, um, and they have some consciousness about their uh, their ancestors, and they believe in to a degree about where they come from, and, you know, they go to higher spiritual levels. Some go to the astral plane. Now, we have to understand this. The astral world is made up of many different levels. So some people, when they die, they think they went to heaven. But what they don't understand on the higher spiritual level, you have nine different, eight different dimensions before you even break out of this um, astral realm. So... I don't want to go too far into that because some people won't even understand if I really broke that down, you know, and I want to keep this an intermediate, you know, beginning level for people so they can get a good understanding.
So some people, now I've seen heaven-like states, and some of these heaven-like states are extremely beautiful. The trees are singing, everything is glowing, uh, people are walking around happy, but that's only one level of heaven. There are other levels of heaven that look like you living in the sun. That's right. And, and, uh, and, uh, and to be honest, there are people that actually live in the sun. The sun is actually a dimension to the fifth dimension, uh, excuse me, a gateway to the fifth dimension. Mm. So these are outside some of the things of uh, totally outside of time, you know. Yeah. From a physical perspective, we look at the sun and say it's a big ball of fire. That's what you call a low conscious level person. It's a, a regular scientist, you know. But now scientists are getting into something called quantum physics. Quantum right. physics is just a physical way of saying what? Metaphysics. They do not want to give the spirit uh, no, no uh, credit for nothing. For nothing. So y'all, if y'all can, y'all should study a little bit on quantum physics because quantum physics is now they're getting into time dimensions and different dimensions and uh, 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 what's that called when they time travel and they're getting into they understanding that God mm -hmm. exists and all this stuff, you know. Like that show Quantum Leap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a part of it. Yep, that's a part of it, Quantum Leap. Um, also, there's a thing called, um, uh, they're looking for this thing called the God particle. The God yeah, particle is that. the energy that holds the whole universe together. Scientists know it's there, but they can't really see it. But they, what, they under, what they understand they could learn how to do is harness the power, harness this energy. And they, they actually learned how to do it. They actually learned how to harness what they call this God particle, which is nothing but melanin. You know what I'm saying? They learned how to harness this energy that holds the whole universe together. And there was a, um, uh, what is the name of this machine called? There was a machine that they turned on. Sorry. Um, CERN, there you go, CERN, and they turn this machine on, and that machine is uh, a machine that they are actually trying to look into other dimensions, and they're also trying to suck in some of this, these God particles, okay. okay? The first time they turned it on, it backfired on them, so I believe it. Stuff. Right, it backfired on them, and actually that threw us into a time shift, to be honest with you, and people don't really understand that, but that kind of... That's where all this uh, Mandela effect stuff comes from, because they turned on that sound machine. Right. Now the, the dimensions are kind of interlapping to a degree. And if they would have left that thing on longer, there's no telling what could have happened. You know what I'm saying? So I had to get into that little bit of science thing, because I want people to understand that some scientists, no matter how wise they seem, they never want to give credit to the spiritual aspect of anything. You know what I mean? They always want to keep it physical, and that's a dangerous person. I don't like being around people like that. They yeah. just can't see nothing past the physical, you know, but they're going to die too one day. That's the sad part. Now, if anybody here has the, the uh, program called Hulu, um, I always recommend this movie. It's called The Astral City. Um, if you can, if anybody out there has Hulu, they should go on Hulu, and they should look at this uh, movie called The Astral City. The Astral City was a movie I came across in about 2013, I believe it was. And basically it shows this doctor who has helped people all his life, had a family, had a beautiful family, had a beautiful wife. He, he helped people, healed people, all this stuff. But when he died, he went to hell. Right. And he couldn't understand what he was doing down there because he's like, man, I help people. But guess what? Just like I just told you all, he invested nothing into his spiritual growth, nothing at all. So you actually see him in hell, and just like I told you all, he was in a cold, dark place. Now, this movie is based on a true event that this man remembers after he died. He came back in another life and said in his past life, he remembered going through this. And he wrote a book about it. And he was a, he's a Spanish guy, so the whole movie is in Spanish, but they have subtitles. So I really recommend everybody watching that movie because it explains a lot about what the actual plane is like. People think that when they die, they're going to go to heaven. And you just can't think that way because there's different levels of heaven. Even the Bible says that, oh, in the seventh heaven, the sixth heaven. Yeah. You can see that all in Revelations. All in Revelations. So there's different levels of heaven. And that's the thing people don't understand. Now, <clears throat> one thing hey, that's going to help people. Question right quick. Yes, sir. So a little bit of Bible. Now, is it smart to go off the verse, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven? Should we be doing that now that we're talking about life after death? 
Is that our mission in life now? Um, it depends on what level you're looking at it from. Because I always tell people, so when you read the Bible, you just can't take it. Depending on who you're talking to, if you're reading it for yourself, you can't take it 100% literally. Because the Bible yeah. has a lot of codes in it. A lot of things that people think that the Bible saying one thing, but it's saying something totally different. You know what I'm saying? If he's talking about seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, he's talking about your heavenly family. Mm. You should be trying to tap into the higher realms of yourself, your spiritual yeah. family. That's what you should try to be getting in contact with. So the Bible in that verse is really saying, seek ye first how to be spiritual. Yep. Okay. Learn yeah. how to be spiritual and everything else will be added to you. That's really what it's saying. So um, you should always seek to be spiritual. The Egyptians prepare for death every day. Every mm. single day. And people are, this is something that people are afraid of, death. You should not be afraid of death at all, especially if you're ready. Why would you be afraid of something that you're going to meet one day? You should be preparing your whole life to meet for that one end. So does death really, then, when you think about that, because the soul lives forever, and being that this body is really not us, it's just a shell. So really, you, because you are actually your soul, you know what I'm saying, you're actually a spirit, so really you don't die because your soul is a turf. Right, exactly. And that's how you got to look at it when our ancestors passed on. They're not dead at all. They just made a transition. That's it. They moved their soul from one body to another body. They're not gone forever. And if, if, if some of us would increase our spiritual abilities, we could meet our ancestors after they die. And we'll move you know? away from that song. We'll move away from that song like Sam Cooke's song in that, in that verse. You know, um, he said, I'm afraid to die because I don't know what's up there beyond the sky. Yeah, that's powerful. Right. Yeah, it is. And that's so many people. You know, it's been, it's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die because I don't know what's exactly. up there beyond the sky. You know what I'm saying? It's been a long it's time coming, but a change going to come. Exactly. Because in the universe, the only thing that's constant is change. So whether you're ready or not, stuff going to change. And everybody is about to see that Monday after the solar eclipse happens. It's going to be great change coming to America, to the world. After the, great, the last great solar eclipse we had was in uh, 1918, and a few months after that, World War I started. A great shift in the planet, great shift in the world. Empires fall. You know? Yeah. New, new energies rise up. People die. New, new people rise up. Yeah. So to a degree, when, when an ancestor like um, Dick Gregory passed away, who has lived to see many great things, traveled all over the world, met his people all over the world, um, civil rights movement, see, had, had a chance to shake hands with Martin Luther King. I mean, that's stuff we dream about today. You know what I'm saying? This man shook hands with Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. You know, he, he's seen a lot. We should Absolutely. never be sad that an ancestor like him passed away. This man got the chance to really live his life. Mm -hmm. I mean, to That's the right. point that he, he died, he was still lecturing and traveling around the world for his people. You he's know? still here with us in our hearts and our spirits. Cause the still here with us. Watching over. Indeed. And, you know, and this is another thing that happens on the planet that people have to understand, too. Sometimes the old energy got to pass on so new energy can come in. You mm, know? I like so, that. So, so, so sometimes you will see a person like right, like Michael Jackson, right? When he died, pay attention because somebody's going to get that energy that Michael Jackson had. Whatever energy that was on Michael Jackson, to me, I would say Beyonce has it now. Beyonce is probably the biggest superstar in the world. Mm. I just can't think of nobody that's bigger than Beyonce. She's loved all over the world. People cry. When she around, I mean, she is a loved artist. Everything she makes yeah. is a hit. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Everybody's going to be humanitarian. And she's humanitarian. And okay. she's a humanitarian, exactly. And her family all into the hoodoo, voodoo stuff. People need to think about that. She, was, she deals with her ancestors. Go look at that thing, Lemonade. They don't love you like I love you. She's walking down the street as, as the goddess Oshun. Mm-hmm with the yellow one and all that stuff. So people That's really right. need to think about that. The you know what I'm saying? Guys. Right. Even show herself taking spiritual baths in the video. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just, it's just people, people just too blind to see sometimes. So, you know, you will take another person like, you know, like maybe like Prince, right? And then the rise of Bruno Mars starts. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so we have to understand that a lot of these ancestors 
that that passed on just creates a way a way for the for the new person to rise. And you see a lot of music, but it also happens in our immediate families. In order for new babies to come to the planet, some of our ancestors got to go. You know, if if grandma was the one that cooked for everybody, she loved on everybody, she helped everybody, and one day grandma got to go, so a new energy just like her can come into the family. That's true. A, a, There's not a enough more, room in the earth for all of us, man. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That, exactly. That, that also that also means as we mature and get older, we got to step it up because we got the blueprints from the ancestors. There you go. There you go. And and that's something I was going to get into next, you know, dealing with these ancestors. So I want people to really understand that what happens after you die is based on your consciousness. What did you put into your consciousness while you was down here? While you was down here on Earth, did you put just keep religious stuff and just focus on regular physical things, which is cool if you got a family, or cool if you're trying to live on because you still got to live here, but you just can't let that be your main focus. This is why people are afraid when they die. You know, uh, leading out on Da Vinci, I believe that I believe this is leading out on Da Vinci on his deathbed. He said, "All my life, I've been learning how to live." I should have been learning how to die. Wow. That's powerful right there, bro. This is a thing from leading out of the Vinci on his deathbed. Man, mm. all my life I've been learning how to live. I should have been learning how to die. Because at that point he realized, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm about to go into. Mm. I done did all these great things in the earth, but now I might be lost. I might need somebody to help me. You know, which is, and this goes into what I'm about to talk to next, our ancestors. You know, our ancestors, it's a certain reason why they call it the afterlife, right? And the afterlife, and the afterlife, you still need things. You don't just, I, I really wish it was to the point where we, uh, our, <laughs> and I'm just going to be honest about this. I really wish it was, you know, when everybody died, the ancestors sitting there with open arms and saying, come on home, baby. <laughs> but that just ain't a fact. It just ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? It just ain't like now you can have your family gather. The families do gather on the astral plane. But a lot of times the certain family members are stuck in certain dimensions. They're stuck in certain dimensions. Okay? Now, <clears throat> I'm going to explain to y'all one of the first experiences I had with one of my family members that passed away. Right? I ain't really going to say the name of this family member. But <clears throat> this is my first experience, and this involves... This is going to go on the book I'm going to write, too. But um, in the title of this chapter, this book is going to be called My, My Family Member in the Black Helicopter. You know, it's all going to make sense in a second. So I had a family member of mine that died, that passed away, and uh, I was really sad because I couldn't uh, go to this person's funeral. And this person passed away in 2010, okay, passed away in 2010. You know what? Forget it. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. You know, this, is my, this is my cousin Randy, okay, my, my cousin Randy. And my cousin Randy had uh, uh, um, he had a, a mental handicap to a degree, right? So he was a, a much older guy, like in his 40s, but in his mind he was more like 16, 17 years old, okay? Very loving uh, man. Um, I have a lot of good memories of my cousin. Um, you know, and this is when I just started getting heavy into spirituality. I became conscious in 2007, but I really started getting real heavy into my spirituality in 2010. Started dealing with altars in 2009, so, and also left the church that year in 2009. So long story short, my cousin passes, and I was hurt because I couldn't make it to the funeral. And uh, so, about the day, uh, two days after he passed, um, I was uh, actually asleep in my bedroom. And this is man, this I'm telling y'all, this is when my dreams and my 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 uh, ability to leave my body was on another level. It was just really high. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm uh standing up in my I'm standing up in my room, and all of a sudden the whole room changes, and I'm standing in front of my cousin. And he's looking at me, he's, and he's crying, right? He's crying to me, and I, I'm looking at him, and I'm crying too. I'm like, oh, my God, what's wrong? Because I'll, I'll actually want to ask him, man, I wish I was there for your funeral. And all. So, he's, he's, so he's looking at me crying, and then he's telling me, he said, cuz, somebody's trying to hurt me. I said, what? I said, what you talking about? Now, we're in this, this room that looks like a kitchen. It looked like an apartment kitchen, and I couldn't understand where he was at. So now my cousin died of a heart attack, right? He died of a heart attack. So all of a sudden, 
I saw this entity kick the door down. This thing was about 11 feet tall. He looked like Jason, right? He had to look like Jason, right? He was huge, you know, and but he didn't fully look human, you know, but he looked huge. I remember he had a mask on, but his mask looked something like Jason mask. And the first thing I thought, he's trying to scare us. Like, that was one of his main purposes, to, to strike fear. And he had a, a butcher knife in his hand. So immediately I told my cousin, I opened his door next to him, I said, run. Run your butt off, man. So we running, you know, and somehow I, I, we running. I get in front of my cousin. You know, we, I'm running faster than him. And I remember running past his one room, and the door closes behind me by itself. So I'm sitting there trying to kick the door in, but I could still see into the other side. And I saw this entity stab my cousin in the heart. Right? Stabbed him in the heart. And what was happening was this entity was trying to make my cousin relive his death over and over and over again. Hmm. The heart attack. The heart attack, right? This is a true, true event. And this thing felt as real as me standing in front of somebody talking. So I'm sitting there crying, trying to kick the door open, very angry, you know, very angry, kicking the door open. And the entity looked at me and turned around and walked away. Like, look, it ain't nothing you could do anyway. I woke up. I was hurt. I would actually woke up crying. I was hurt because the, 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 the dream and vision I had just felt so real, and I was so hurt by that. So I only did what I knew I could do. I don't go to church no more, so I couldn't call on Jesus, you know. So I'll never forget I had just bought this statue of the god Anubis. And for all those who don't know who the god Anubis is, look him up. He's one of those. He's the deity of the dead. He's, like, he's a jackal-headed, dog-headed entity. Um, he, he's also the entity that takes the dead where they need to go. You know, he takes the dead where they need to go. He, he, it, 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 on the Egyptian walls and the temples, you'd actually see him holding people's hands to take them into the afterlife so they could be judged and all this other stuff. So I actually just started reading up on his deity. So I said, man, I can't go backwards to Christianity, even though I felt like that's all I knew how to do. Please, Jesus, save him, Jesus, please, you know. So what I did was I got on my knees, lit a white candle, got on my knees, and prayed to this deity. And this is one of the first powerful, not the, not, not the first one, but one of the first powerful spiritual experiences I had. Got on my knees, prayed to this deity, tears in my eyes. I know this deity felt my emotion. And I asked the deity to help my cousin, take his pain away, help my cousin, and get him out of that place where this entity is bothering him. You know, my cousin had, was mentally handicapped. He didn't really have no consciousness like that. You see what I'm saying? He didn't mm -hmm. practice spirituality on this earth. He didn't know. But the entity took advantage of that, right? So <clears throat> about the next day, I would say a day or two later, I go to sleep after praying to this entity, and I wake up in a dream, and I'm standing in my old church, standing in my old church, and I'm looking around. I say, wow, you know, what am I doing here? All of a sudden, my cousin walks through the door. He walks through the door, and he has a little, I'll never forget this, he had a little boy in his hand. He had a little boy in his hand. And he walked through the door, and he's actually talking to me in his right mind. And I'm just blown away. I'm like, oh, my God, like, my cousin was mentally handicapped on earth, but he's talking to me like a regular person. And he's like, hello. He's like, hey, cousin, I just want to come and thank you. I'm like, what, what, what? Like, what are you talking about? He's like, like he's like, uh, I got help. Somebody helped me. This is all the true story I'm telling y'all, man. I'm all the true story I'm telling y'all. He's like, he's like, I, he's like, I'm going to another life, and I'm gonna have a son in my next life. He did. This is my son. I'm like, wow. Now, now at this point, I didn't even understand like what that meant. <laughs> you know what I'm mm. saying? But before he came back to his next life, he actually got a chance to see his son that he's gonna have in a future life. Mm. You know, and he was holding his son in his arms. The boy had to be maybe one years old, and he was looking at me smiling. I could, I remember exactly how his little boy looked. And he's like, yeah, cousin. He didn't look like my cousin. My cousin came to me in a body that I knew him in. But he was talking to me in his right mind. It was the most beautiful moment that I think I've had. One of the most beautiful moments on, on the astral plane. So he, he looked at me and said, cousin, thank you for everything, but I got to go now. And he walked back through this door of light. And that was, a, that was like the last time I saw my cousin. And I woke up so happy, full of joy. I got back on my knees and I prayed to the God of Nubis and thanked him for everything that he's done, you know, for helping my cousin. Never forget, I had to walk outside to go pick up my wife's work. When I walked outside, I looked up in the sky. There was a black helicopter hovering above my house. A black helicopter. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, now the first thing I thought was, oh, my God, these are the people that have been watching me. said they've been watching me since I was a kid. 
I didn't know that for sure. <laughs> for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, some of those thoughts yeah. too, yeah. You know, but this, I got a letter in the mail when I was 21 that a, a group of people said, look, we've been profiling you since you was a kid. You got all these spiritual abilities inside you. We want to bring you in our organization. This is a true thing. My mama is my witness. My mama is my witness. I show her the letter. You know, and uh, that's the first thing I thought because it was people. I remember it was two guys in the helicopter, and they both looked at me and flew away. Uh, I'll never forget the helicopter made almost no noise. And it was so low to the ground, I could see the guys in the helicopter. I'm like, what a coincidence. I do this ritual. I pray to this guy, and there's people, some people in the helicopter looking at me. And these people just flew away. And shortly after that, I started seeing UFOs and all this crazy stuff. So, well, it's not crazy, but, you know, all this other stuff. So that's one of my first experiences I've had with a family member in the underworld, you know. In the underworld, and yes, my cousin. Yeah, that, that was a good yeah, man. Um, yeah. yeah, man. And my cousin to this day is on a higher realm. I actually been looking for him, and I haven't been able to find him. So I think he already went back to Earth. I think he went back down to Earth, and you know, was trying to get reborn. You know, because I know that happens for a fact. I know that happens for a fact. So, yeah, that's one of my. <laughs> and I could tell y'all about some other family members, but I ain't gonna go too deep. You know, um, so that's one of my first experiences I had with a deity. That's when I knew without a shadow of a doubt that gods are real. Can't nobody convince me. Can't nobody tell me otherwise. I know. When you really go to these gods with, with an open heart, they will respond to you. Let me interject in there, man. Um, yes, sir. I definitely understand the Anubis effect, yeah. And I studied uh, some of that. And I'm glad that you mentioned the Anubis and explained his purpose. Because on the flip side, we have something we deal with, death. You know, the skull, mm -hmm. the hoodie, the reaper, the sword, or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. But I got my consciousness somewhere in 2005, and um, I, I ended up stopped going to church. But I still keep my Christian faith. But the thing about it, um, 2007, I graduated college, and I went to uh, uh, art school. And we studied art history. We studied a lot of things. But long story short, man, when I came into my consciousness, the Illuminati wave came into effect. And I want to tell the audience that wave is sent to put blocks and govern you, man. That so Illuminati true. wave, because they're going to spiritually put these things on us so we can think on different planes and different levels, because they already know we tapping into those planes, but they want to put the fear plane in, in certain degrees so that when you think on these things, you'll be like, oh, that right there is our, our problem. But, you know, when we start thinking about our ancestors, because that's theirs, man, you know, so man, with all that, so you, true. Know, with, you know, the Leonardo, he explains a lot of this. Kennedy tried to explain a lot of this. But um, how they sacrifice and do their rituals, that stuff is um for them and their gods, because you got to know that um, sometimes, and I tell you why I said when I came to consciousness, I, I, I was because when I came to consciousness, it came out of a lot of depression because I was witnessing this Illuminati effect that was happening on the planet, and it touched me on a spiritual level because I'm seeing how dang people really is about this money, and they're not even seeing that the money is controlling them, the greed is controlling them, the lust is controlling them. All these things are ways to manipulate it. And um, just a disclosure to, to to the audience, man. You know, we got this eclipse coming up. Um, what's that term that we gave them last week? Oh. Uh, the term we gave them last week about, um, not solstice. What is the term we gave them last uh, week? Retrograde? About retrograde. We got eclipse, retrograde, and then we're talking about changing our name to tribal. So a disclosure, y'all, this episode is not about no cutting chickens. It's not about hollering at the moon. It's not about <laughs> drinking virgin blood. We're talking about right. being in tune, man, consciousness in with tone. our ancestors. You feel me? Because there's something in our DNA that makes us who we are, obviously. But in right. the DNA is our ancestors that makes you be like, dang, why am I feeling this vibe? I need to be a vegan for some reason. I don't eat meat no more. And I'm not as hungry right. as I used to be. You feel me? I right. don't just feel hunger. I used to want to eat all the time. Like, oh, that's it. Oh, it looks good. Let me eat it. Come on, go, go. But you learn that you're now a pig 
And in our mm-hmm. culture, a pig ain't no <laughs> animal that what you want to be like. And let me you say know, something about that, brother. Mm-hmm. And, and, and let me say something about that because um, what you said about the ancestors is so true. And the reason why I just said that story about my cousin, because I want people to understand that it's a lot of people in America, especially black people, that our ancestors are stuck. I don't care who you mm-hmm. are. Some yeah. we, our ancestors need our help. I've seen people's ancestors praying to praying to Jesus, praying to the gods, praying to somebody yeah. for help, because w- the living can help the dead. And the dead can help the living. And for all the people who are scared, who are afraid of this stuff, we have to understand that this is already in your DNA to worship your ancestors. It's honoring and showing respect. And guess what happens when you feed your ancestors and you help them out and you do things for them? They shield you. They protect you. You know what I'm saying? I, like I told you all a story before about when I walked into a spiritualist church and a lady saw all my ancestors standing behind me. Why does that happen? Because I constantly feed them. Now, for people who want to get into ancestor work, um, understand, first of all, there's nothing to be afraid of. These are people that passed away. I know the Bible says you shouldn't deal with the dead, but, you know, they show you people like my cousin um, Amari said, all in the Bible that dealt with the dead, you know, called on the dead, you know, yeah. and did all this stuff. So it don't, even if Good it's job, Jesus, Amari. it don't make no – right, even if it's Jesus, it don't make no, no – no, uh, no oh, difference. Didn't he die? The Bible said he died, but he rose again. People don't even understand what that means. He's just in a spiritual body, but he's not physical. And at the end of the day, Jesus don't even exist. <laughs> but I'm just making that statement for, for Christians who, who think what I'm saying may be crazy. You know what I'm saying? You need to understand you're African, and all the African mm-hmm. cultures practice ancestor worship. Yep. This is nothing but honoring your ancestors. You know what I'm saying? This is something that's very, very important. So first thing you need to do to honor your ancestors is you need an ancestor altar. Now, how do you do that? You simply get <clears throat> you simply get a uh, you simply get a uh, anything natural wood, glass table. You know, uh, I actually would recommend one of those too, and or uh, even metal. You know, something natural though. And what you want to do is get you a white cloth. If you don't have a white cloth, that's okay. But it's better to get a white cloth, and you're going to cover that area with that. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to get a picture of, if you don't got no, if you don't, I know somebody who don't got no pictures of the ancestors. Even one of my friends was adopted. He don't have no pictures of his ancestors. You know what I'm saying? So what you're going to do is um, just put uh, a little book up there. Anybody, even if they wasn't your blood relative, they're still your ancestors. People that took care of you, the people that loved you, you write they you write their name down in a book or on a piece of paper, and you leave that on the altar. Leave that on the altar, and even when you when you do these rituals, all of your blood ancestors feel it anyway, because when your ancestors pass away, they actually go live inside of you. They're actually still alive inside of you. So once you got the the, the sheet, the picture of your ancestors or the names of your ancestors, you get you a white candle. As you get the white candle, go to the dollar store. Get you a little glass bowl. Go on eBay and order something called Ancestor Money. Now, on eBay, it's going to be called Hell Notes. And I'm going to tell you all why. Oh, the man. Ancestor Money, <laughs> right, right, I'm going to tell you all why. The Ancestor Money, the, the people today who have Ancestor Money that still is works and everything like that is the Asian people, right? Some of us, yes, that's right. Some of the Asian people, you know, some of the Africans anyway. Let's, 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 let's be honest about that. Uh, the Xi people, anybody who don't know, go study the Xi people, and, and you can yeah. see how the, the Xi people transit. They call these people the people of heaven. Mm. So when you go back to the oldest dynasties of China, you're going to see black people. You're going to see black yeah. people with those eyes that look like Chinese people today. The first Chinese mm. were black. That's a fact. I ain't making this up. Go look up the Xi people. Who might be into that area? Shows Asiatic, our DNA shows Asiatic descent in it. Right. Black. But because of the way we look today, we think, oh, there's no way we can look like we could, they could be our people. Well, to prove that they got black blood, they got black eyes and black hair. Yep. You know, and I hate to say this, but this is just true. Once you break down the black hair to, to red and blonde and other hair, those are what you call pedigrees. That's a lower vibratory type of human. With blue eyes and blonde hair, that's just a fact. Uh, Mendel's law even says that. 
Black genes are dominant, white genes are recessive. So it's no offense, it's just a fact. You know? So at the end of the day, um um at the end of the day, um I almost forgot what I was talking about now. <laughs> but at the end of the day we have the note and the ritual. Yes, yes. At the end of the day we can uh so oh yeah, the uh the hell notes. So the reason why the hell notes is uh they call it that is because what happened was European missionaries went into China and they told the people, Look, y'all all y'all ancestors in hell anyway. So this money that y'all burning is actually we going y'all need to change that to hell money. Because y'all ancestors are all in hell. This is what the Christian missionaries told the people in China. So the name was changing some ancestor money to hell notes. And sometimes it's okay because some of our ancestors are in hell. I know nobody don't want to think that, but some of our ancestors are going through hell-like states. Old uncle this and auntie that. That you know, let's be honest. Some of these aunties and uncles they did do nothing but drink and smoke all their life and eat that. That you know, let's be honest. Some of these aunties and uncles they did do nothing but drink and smoke all their life and they passed away. We got to think about that. We have to help them, not just sit there and judge them for that. But we need to help them, help them get out of that state. And you do it by you take you take those ancestor monies and you burn them, and you call on your ancestors. And when you burn it, you say, "I burn this ancestor money for all of my ancestors, known and unknown." And you let that thing burn out. And what happens is the Jade Emperor, who's a very powerful god, very very loving god, also. He will take that ancestor money. His servants will take that to your ancestors. I've seen this. I've hmm. seen people ancestors lining up to get the money. I'm telling y'all, man. Even when you put food, another way you can honor your ancestors: you, the food that you cook with your family, or even the food you buy. Take a piece of that and put it on the ancestor altar. It will appear in the astral realms because the altar, you're altering the realities and you're bringing uh, that realm down to your reality. You can put the food on that altar and light a white candle, and the ancestors will come and eat that food. You won't physically see that see them eat that food, but they will absorb the energy of that food, and you will start to see things work out for you. Trust me on that. You're going to feel protected, right? And when you go back to African cultures, you're going to see them. They they put sometimes they they make things flow out into the ocean. They'll call on the goddess Yemiya to to take stuff to their ancestors. Sometimes they have a whole big, the whole village got one big altar, and everybody puts something up there for the ancestors. You know? So this is some, one of the things I'm going to teach my daughter to do. And she watches me do these things right now to this day. You know, she watches me do my ancestors' work right in front of me. You know? So at the end of the day, that's something that people can get into that's going to benefit them very greatly. Ancestor work, burning ancestor money, placing food on the altar, and praying to your ancestors. Ask them for help. Tell them you need that job. They can they can move and work things out on a different level than we can. They can move differently than we can. Mm-hmm. Especially now, when you hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They can move differently, but would it make more sense because this is tribal unity organization now, y'all? If you have mm-hmm. some ancestor for help, would it make more sense to be in a situation where your ancestors that benefited off their friends, so their friends being someone else's ancestors, wouldn't you want to put yourself within that unification and then ask for help so that the network will work, be stronger or would I want to go over there to Europe or over there to, you know what I'm trying to say, or would I want to go into the corporate office and be like, oh, I want a job. Should I really be in tune with the new tribe that we're creating now because we all on one thought process now. Whether y'all know it or not, we on a thought process where there is a nation being formed within a nation. There is no black people in this presidential cabinet, y'all, and that cabinet is falling apart on a presidential level. But on a street level, a lot of black people ain't got a problem with what's going on in, in, in government right now. And government is putting oppression on us because they've taken out some of the funding, but a lot of people that's coming to this new conscience that we're building, they're understanding that we're going to make it. So should we stay strong and, and, and operate with our ancestors within the confines that they used to operate in as far as, um, um you know, I think I understand that question, um, but this, this, is, this is what I say. You should always I work always with your ass. my questions. <laughs> it's all good. 
Um, you should always work with your ancestors no matter what. And you should pass the, those things on to the children so your next generations can know to honor you when you die. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you are taken care of in the afterlife. There's ways that you can even send yourself money in the afterlife. So when you get over there, everything's waiting for you. You see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, the truth of the matter is this. And, you know, whether people want to be, uh, agree to it or not, it's just the truth. Um, yeah, sometimes you got Native American ancestors that are not African. Sometimes you got white ancestors. And guess what? You can't deny yourself. So I've seen people who burned hell notes and did things, and black and whites line up to get that money. Because no matter what happened, a portion of that makes up who you are. Yeah. Did you know that if you change? Do you know that if you even take one percent of your DNA out, your whole body would change? One percent of your yeah. DNA out, your whole body would change. I even got Malaysian people in my DNA. You see what I'm saying? So I'm I'm majority African, and that's what I go with. But at the end of the day, when I burn my ancestor money, I know in my mind because I've seen it. Different ethnic groups pop up to get that money. They have the right to do that because they're connected to you the source, the DNA. Because one thing everybody needs to understand that you are God. You just don't know it yet. It's like Brother Bobby Hemmings said, a roach knows a roach, a dog knows a dog, but the black man and woman in America is the only thing that don't know what it is. You are God and you don't even know it. John chapter 10, verse 34, is it not written in the law that ye are gods? Mm -hmm. Jesus said that. He said the scripture can't be broken. You are gods. You know, and people try to take what Jesus said and flip that around. Well, he was really saying, he said it straight up. You were God. Well, that's small G. What difference do it make? You were God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Said, you were God. He also you said know? Good exactly, same, my brother. Yeah, you were God. So at the end of the day, you uh, there's the old Kabbalic saying that says, man on earth said God lives in heaven, but the angels in heaven say God lives on earth. It's a powerful statement. And one of my favorite TV shows called Supernatural, some people might be too scared to watch that, but it's an incredible TV show. And one episode, these two guys, they call them the Winchesters, they're looking for God, right? God left heaven, and the angels are fighting. It's a war in heaven. Very powerful TV show. So they're fighting. They're fighting against the demons, the angels. and So somehow the, the uh, Winchesters, they get killed. They die. They go to heaven. And they look, <laughs> they go to heaven, they looking for God. Like, man, where in the world of God at? It's chaos down here, man. So they, they, they say, oh, you got to go talk to Joshua. They said, Joshua, who is that? They said, he's in that room over there. So Joshua is this black man with an afro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's the only one that knows where God at. <laughs> yeah. He's the only one that knows where God at, right? So now Joshua is also Yahshua, which is what? Jesus. Yashua. That's what they call Jesus, right? They call Jesus Yahshua. You know what I'm saying? So he, he's Joshua. They look at him. They say, hey, man, where God at? He said, oh, man, God's on earth. And he's like, what? We looking for him up here. He down there the whole time? He said, yeah, pretty much he's been down there. So I just, wanted to, <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there. That's a very good TV show. But, you know, um, so that's what it is with the ancestor work. Start, people need to start on that level, start honoring their ancestors, and watch their life change for the better. Watch their life change so for the better. Stay, so don't stay bitter, people. Not at all, because your ancestors need your help. They need your help. So help them out. The Bible don't teach you nothing about ancestor work. Nothing at all. God don't even tell you to honor your ancestors. Leave it up to God, whether they're going to heaven or hell. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. What happened with the Ten Commandments? Honor thy mother and father. I didn't say before or after death. It just said it head up. So yeah, I mean, you can look at that like that. <laughs> but that's a, that's a true statement. This is why I, do, I still pump with the Bible to a degree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't quote the Bible and everything all the time, but the Bible has a lot of truth to it, depending on what, you, what angle you look at it from. Depending on what yeah. angle you look at it from. If you're reading it directly, you're, you're going to miss the whole boat. But well, if you're reading mm -hmm. it from a metaphysical level, you will see. But I'm going to tell you all straight up. And a lot of these occult rituals, and these, they use the Bible. Yeah. That's right. They use the B-I-B-L-E, the little book. They use yeah. it. Yeah. The sun book. People need to think about that. So <clears throat> I know we're coming up on time here, but um, I'm glad that uh, 
that I was able to do the show today. And I just wanted people to really understand um, the importance of the afterlife. And I'm telling y'all, y'all, in order for me to go deeper into this, I would be have to be on here for hours. That's how deep the idea and the concept of the afterlife is. Yeah. But people have to get out of their mind that they can just live their whole life, and then when they're 67 years old, if you make it to that, you can start trying to figure this thing out. Some people live 60, 70, 80 years old and still don't think about life after death because they mm -hmm. focus so much on the physical world. And that has to be a balance, which is something I had to learn because I focus so much on the spiritual. It came to the point I didn't even want to be here no more. And I wasn't depressed. Yeah, I wasn't sad. I, said, I got depressed. <laughs> well, well, see, no, let me, let me make it clear. I wasn't depressed or sad. I was excited because every night I went to sleep, I saw what was over there. I'll tell y'all, man, I've seen this one level of heaven. I saw a color that don't even exist on this earth. Think about that for a second. I saw a color, and guess what? I can still see that color in my head. I can't describe it to y'all. There are no words. Can't tell you what it's closer to, but every time I think about it, I get this excitement and joy all over my body thinking about that color. Mm. I actually saw a color that don't even exist on earth. It ain't close to nothing down here. That's what you got to look forward to up there. There are different levels of stuff that you can't even perceive. You can't even perceive it yet. Like, for example, different colors. People can't even put that in their brain, the colors that, that they think exist. In order to make a new color down here, you got to mix two colors together. So, so I've seen incredible things. That I, and at that exact realm, I didn't even want to leave. I didn't even want to come back to Earth after I've seen that. So I know what was waiting for me. So when I had my daughter, it balanced me out because if I started focusing more on the physical world to the point where I knew I had to leave something in place for my daughter when I, when I left. You see what I'm saying? So it, it balanced me out to a degree because all I focused on was the spiritual for years. Didn't care nothing about this physical world and hardly nobody in it. <laughs> That's how I was. I was ready to go. I have a good friend of mine named Buddy. He's a very powerful magician. And me and him would talk for hours about death. We ain't never talk about taking ourselves out. That's not what we see. See, the thing is, when you talk about death, people think it's a low vibratory subject, and it's not. Death is simply yeah. the gateway of transition. The gateway of transition. And if you don't study it, when that, when that, when that, when Mr. Death comes get you one day, people are going to be lost. One of my spiritual fathers is the God Baron Samadhi. He was one of the gods that rule over death. He also rules over the graveyards and the ancestors. I didn't choose him as a spiritual parent. He just was. He taught me a lot about death. Nothing to be afraid of at all. It's a beautiful thing when we all go if we're ready. If you ain't ready, it's a sad thing. And let me tell you this, tell you this another thing to y'all. In and, 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 and the original um, uh, practices of our ancestors, when a baby was born, they would cry. They would cry when a baby was born. This is really heavy in the, was, was really heavy in the Zulu um, and that probably still is, the Zulu, uh, with the Zulu tribes. They would cry when the baby's born, and they would rejoice when a person died. They would have a going home celebration. They would be so happy that this, they would be sad, like this baby is about to come down here to the suffering and the sickness and the sadness. But in, the, in today's world, we do the opposite. We celebrate a baby being born, and we cry when people die. See how they flip the energy on us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is flipped on us. And to this day, it will take, it's a psychological thing, For it will take people years to get that idea in their head to, to not be so happy when a baby's here and to rejoice when somebody dies. People can't even perceive that. But this is what our ancestors practice. So like I used the great example of the brothers who was, who was uh, thugs and gangsters on the corner pouring out liquor for, the, for their brothers and sisters that wasn't there, that's an ancient practice that these people was doing that's in your DNA. And sometimes yeah. things pop up in you that you don't even know or understand why you're doing it, but you're doing it. Can you know? repeat the name of that ritual again, cousin? Uh, what ritual? The ritual you just said about pouring out the, uh, you know, the drink offering to your ancestors. Oh, it's called uh, libations. Libations. If y'all, uh, if y'all could uh, open y'all, if anybody out there can open their consciousness up on a deeper level, y'all can look at the brother Bobby Hammett. The brother Bobby Hammett, if you can get past the cousin. You can, you can really see this brother's extremely intelligent and telling nothing but truth. One of my first metaphysical teachers. You know, but sometimes we use the, the cussing, we let that block us. But I'm telling y'all, right. the, the information is deep. The information Bobby is deep. He's one, of the, he's one of the original people who was first doing libations out there like that. 
I say, I say, calling on the gods and the ancestors before he started he out the liquor and all. Huh? I say he was spitting out the liquor and all. Spitting out the liquor. Sometimes he'll pour it out. So what y'all can do, if y'all got plants in your house, y'all take a plant and y'all just drop some water in there and call on the name of your ancestors. You can just drop one water and say, pour some water and say, all my ancestors, no, 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 and I say. I used to do this every morning, and then my, my practices evolved, and I, got, I started doing some other things. But it's still very powerful. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so you can pour out something for Dick Gregory, I'll say. All my uh, auntie, I'll say. Uncle, I'll say. Cousins, I'll say. You know, you can even do it for the living. Because water is one of them elements that can pass between heaven and earth. Yeah. Powerful element. It's one of the few elements that actually change structure on a consistent oh, basis. Gas, solid, liquid. It can transform. Water is a very powerful uh, element. Probably, in my opinion, the mm. most powerful. So when you pour that yeah. water into that earth element, you bring in, and you calling on using the air element to call in them entities. You mixing all the, and then your heart, your energy, you mixing on all the elements together right there. Mixing all the elements mm. together right there. So that's a very powerful thing that people need to do and they should do. Call in your ancestors. And please help them. It's time to open up the line, Brother Amari. All right, if anybody out there that's listening, if you would like to ask questions or you have a comment, you may now do so by pushing star six. Again, if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment, push star six. And it would be great also if you let us know where you're calling in from. All right. That being said, excellent uh, lesson. Joseph and Jarell, uh he also has a business called New Life Tools. My Hello? brother, tell them about you. Hello? Yes, yes. yes. I got a question. We got, we got a question. What's your question? Okay. When we're talking about ancestors, are we talking about those that's in our family line or just the whole the whole makeup of the uh, of anybody that's passed and lived on before us? Oh, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. Um, when we're talking about ancestors, we're talking about it from usually from two different perspectives. You're usually talking about your people. So if you're an African, if you're, if you're a European, if you're Asian, you're usually talking about your people, and you're also talking about your immediate family. So if you're a black person in America and somebody who black that you really love, they pass away, that's your ancestor. You know, they're part of your people. And also your immediate family, that would be your ancestors. Okay, so when we're when we're referencing these our gods and our, the deities and all those that came before us, are those are are those considered ancestors as well, or are those just? That is another very good question. Another very good question. That those are also your ancestors. Yes, that is very true on a higher level. The gods are your ancestors also. That is a very good question. Those are also your ancestors. That's why we call them spiritual parents. Because what you're doing in that aspect, you're talking to the spiritual aspect of yourself. So very powerful. Okay, so that's where my confusion is at because we're well, we're having a conversation. We're trying to see like ancestors. Okay, so I understand ancestors are those that you know in your family that died, but most of them in this day and age, they die not knowing anything. So how are we mm -hmm. helping those ancestors that died and they don't know anything besides burning, you know, the ancestor money to them and stuff like that? Right. How do we pull them out their debacle and allow them to, right. you know, get unstuck? Yes. Um, well, when you understand the science of the ritual of, 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 of ancestor work, then you will understand, like, kind of how it works. So what it is is that when you're doing this, when you take your physical energy your DNA, you, you use DNA, which is data, to do everything, right? So mm -hmm. your, your ancestors are connected to your DNA. So as you take your own personal energy and you constantly give them your energy and you give them the energy of food, the energy of offerings, water, and those things, they actually feed off of that. And the more energy they receive, they can go to a different level, a higher level. Yeah. One of the main reasons why our ancestors are stuck on a such a low level, they have no energy. They have no consciousness. So when you when you feed them food, you actually strengthen them to go to a higher level. 
strength. Can I have to go to a higher level on that question too? No. Okay. I would, I would well, like well, wait, well, 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 hold on, well, hold on, brother. Let me make sure these uh that that she didn't have any more questions first. I did just have one question. I, I don't know if I lost it or not. Okay, so okay, so we're going to that class. Oh, I think I lost it. Okay, so I'll 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 I think I lost it. <laughs> oh, I apologize. Oh, okay, here we go. It was okay. So we were talking about going back. Oh no, this is the other question I had. You said something about when you die. You know, you want to make sure you. Okay, we we're basically living each moment. So for that one moment in death. So my understanding when you said that was like, okay, so all the information that I get up now, when I die and people come and my, you know, my lineage come back to to me as I'm an ancestor, they'll be able to get the knowledge that I knew, unlock the knowledge in which I knew. Is that true or am I over? Um, no, that's very true. If they can, if they can uh, talk to you, like prime example, I can talk to my ancestors right now. None of my ancestors that I know of are spiritual right now, right? So. If you have a spiritual answer that I pass on, yes, you can receive information back from them if somebody in the family is able to connect with that ancestor on a deeper level, yes. So the more I know, the more I learn and gain now in death, I'll be more more valuable to my, to the, my offspring, basically, is what I'm saying. Yes, you'll be more valuable to your offspring because you, you will know how to, help, how to help them because you've already understood and practiced on this realm what to do, how to get back, how to send things to them. You know what I'm saying? These are all in books, and, and, and masters teach these things, and these are things that everybody can learn. So, yes, you will be able to help them on a deeper level um, once you do that, yes. Because the, the, because the truth is this, like, the more consciousness you gain, the more access you have to the afterlife because you're more aware. Like, if you never heard of an angel, why would you see that in the afterlife? You see what I'm saying? If you never heard of the God, the God Shiva, why would you see that in the afterlife? But if you access, allow your mind to have access to this information, which is nothing but spiritual data, to this DNA, this information that come out of these books, you will be able to access those things on a higher level. So when a person dies only knowing Allah and Jesus, they're on a very low conscious level. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the I, I don't want to take up all the time, but then we the last question was about the generational curses. So, and let me clear up the generational. I'm sorry. Repeat the question, please. Hello. Uh oh. I think we might have lost her. I know something about generational curses, but I couldn't um I couldn't remember the question. Um so yeah, uh brother David, uh you can go ahead and ask the question you were saying. Oh, my mine wasn't a question, it was actually a comment to giving energy to the ancestors that's gone. You know, I'm the black sheep, so I come from a different perspective. I know everybody be like Oh man, I said that, and I sound like grandma. I sound like my dad when I said that. So that's true, mm -hmm. and it's in your DNA. And um, I'm gonna give a more practical way of thinking about it because I do. I'm involved with making an exhibit where I'm documenting the history of the pioneers. So that mm -hmm. alone, documenting the history of pioneers is a part that you will play in helping your ancestry because if all is lost then all you got is what they program you with. So we're going to break the programming, and we're going to go with what our ancestors left us and gave us. We already heard about how black people invented all these inventions. Well, it's time to bring right. that back. And when we bring that back, the ancestors are going to say, yes, that is us. On the physical realm, thank you for giving us that. And when they smile, that energy turns into more light for them. So I just wanted to say it like yes, that. Sir. That's how you can help them transcend to another higher level and um as far as you on your plane helping them transcend to a higher level is good because when you go to taking upon things that they taught you you do something called allowing the legacy to continue so mm -hmm. these things are what helps the tribe become a nation and helps the tribe become stronger that's what i wanted to say about uh, uh helping our ancestors that has already passed Right, and right. And let me say this one last thing too. Uh another thing I've seen on the astral plane is uh demonic energies. 
what they will do is they'll go around and they'll they'll actually snatch up our ancestors, right? And they'll they'll feed off their energy. So the ancestors are so weak that they can't even fight back. You know what I'm saying? First of all, they have no idea of anything spiritual, so they don't even know how to fight spirituality, spiritual wise. They don't even know how to fight. But if they're if they have more energy, right? They have more light around them. So the right. so the entities right. look like you know what that person got a lot of energy around them, but they it'll be harder to take them down. So I'm gonna move on. You know what I'm saying? Because once they have more energy, their prayers that they are praying in hell or in lower states actually get heard by higher entities. Mm -hmm. It takes energy when you pray. Prayer is the air element. Talking mm -hmm. from your lungs and your mouth. You need energy behind your prayers to reach heaven. So when they have more energy, they can reach higher states also when they pray for help. You see what I'm saying? So giving offerings and stuff to our ancestors is something that will benefit you greatly. You just got to try it and see. Just got to try it and see. Wonderful. Any more questions so, out there? Yeah, yeah, I have a one. Oh, I have okay. A who that? This is Marquis Shepherd. I'm from Main City, Florida. Uh, when you say, um, fine. When you say when you pour the water in the plant, what do that do for our ancestors, or how do you go about doing that? Well, when you uh, when you pour the water into the plant, what you're doing is you're connecting the energy of what you're saying to the water and to the earth element. Um, on a spiritual level, um, anything we do comes from the astral plane. So, prime example, if you want more, more money. And like I told people to use these gemstones, gemstones represent the earth element. They come from the earth. And you're using the power of prayer. You're praying with your gemstones and different things like that, connecting it to money. You're pulling that down from the higher realms, the astral plane, into the physical world. So when you call your ancestor's name, you're pouring it into an earth element, which would be outside in your backyard or even into a plant. You're, you're, you're um, allowing your ancestors access to the energy that you're actually uh, – that you're actually trying to give them, which is a ashe, which is power. Okay. That's mm -hmm. all I want to know. Thank you. Yep, for thank that. you for calling in. Yep. So that so that little bit of time that you devoted meant something to the answer. What? That you poured that out yes. and had the intention behind it. The intention is the key. There you go, the intention, exactly. Because we have to understand they are in a place where there's no space where space and time is different. You know what I'm saying? It's totally different because the fourth dimension, even Albert Einstein said it, the fourth dimension is space and time. Kind so the, so this is why in your dreams you could be thinking about something and you could be there in an instant. So when we hmm. connect that, we do the right things down here to connect to our ancestors up there. The, the, the time in which it goes to them is totally different than what we think. And like hmm. I said, it works because you have their blood. Hmm. You have their DNA. So it's going to work. As long as you're connected to them on a DNA level, you can always access your ancestors. And let me say there's another thing, too. When you have a dream about somebody that passed away, they are trying to contact you. You definitely need to send them some energy. I don't care if they come to you and they were sitting at a table with you and they were just saying hi, send them some money, send them some food, send them something, some water, especially water. Water is very something that you can always give the ancestors for energy. Mm -hmm. All so right, any so more questions? brothers and sisters, for the sake of time, we'll just take one more question, and uh, we're going to have to end it on that note. So is there anybody else out there who has a question or a comment? Uh, if you do, put star six, star six. And it would be great if you let us know where you're calling in from. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, then, family. So we're Tribal Unity Organization, comprised of myself, Amar Amari, A M A R D. Hey, 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 hey. Slow down, slow down. <laughs> I heard hey, let me go ahead and bust up the monotony. Everybody else scared or they at church right now. Everybody <laughs> scared or they at church right now. All right? <laughs> I listen to this show every Sunday, okay, what? faithfully, faithfully. I heard the last one and the last one before that. Now, this is my okay. This is my question, but the question ain't really for me. It's kind of for my wife. So pretty much okay. it's like this. I need, you, I need you to answer this. Uh, in regards to the karma, I understand karmatic energy throughout your ancestry or your DNA or your bloodline. 
But would it be safe to say that you're only responsible for the karma within your dispensation or in your generation that you can directly affect, right? You can't be responsible for it because obviously if you see that uh, uh, generational curse now, it's been there a generation before you and a generation before that. So, right. if, so if we're here on this spiritual mission to clean this karma up so we can go to a, a higher dimension, then we obviously can only be held to the karma of our generation that that we're alive to see. Is that a good analysis? Or? Okay. Okay, let me answer that question like this. Um, we have to understand that before we come down to any family, we sign contracts. And those contracts are, uh, consist of taking on the family karma. Uh, the karma, the family that you choose, you also take on that karma to work out your, your, your spirituality in the best way that you can or your karma. So you can create what they call dharma, which is good karma. You see what I'm saying? So, yes, when you get into a family, you actually take on the, the karma of all the ancestors. This is actually what happened. The, person, the ancestors hope that somebody will be born in the family to wake up, become spiritual, and help everybody else out. You know, this is what they're doing. So, yes, you have your own personal karma to deal with, like, prime example, if you have a family that dealt with a lot of poverty or a family that dealt with a lot of uh, maybe murdering in the family, it's always going to – you're also connected to that energy. That energy. Your job is to, to uh, clean up and beat both of those karmas. Once you beat that, nobody else in the family has to go through it. Now, you may not be the only one with that task, and you're not. Everybody in the family has that task. Some people in the, some people in the family are going to have to be coming back through the bloodline until they learn it for themselves. Right? Until they learn it for themselves. Once you learn it, you get to move on. And you also uh, defeated certain aspects of the karma in the family. So, in, so in spirituality, we call it tritis. There's something that Master Gibson puts out there. They call it tritis. Tritis is something that you gain throughout different it's spiritual karma. You know what I'm saying? You gain it throughout different lifetimes and different families. And one of the best ways you can beat that also is by using ancestor money for that. You can actually bring your ancestor money and say, I want to burn away all the spiritual negative karma in my family. And you can burn those ancestor, that ancestor money for that. And you can pay the debt. That's really what the negative karma is. You're paying the debt off. You can pay that off. So even if your grandmother, if somebody, let me say this last thing too. Your grandmother, if somebody grandmama died and they left $100,000 debt, yes, somebody got to take care of that physically, but also that's a spiritual thing that people got to take on. So I just wanted to say that too. Mm. You mean to tell me I can't use my um I can't I can't discharge the debt? No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could, man. Hey. I wish we could. Hey, bro. Who are you, man? And where you calling in from, my brother? Thank Y'all know this this is brother new this is brother new rule coming straight out of Arizona. I oh, what's, hey, what's good? What's going hey, on? Up? I listen, I listen to all the shows, man. I listen, I listen yes, to support y'all brothers. I don't care if it's four people on the line. The fact that y'all manifesting this thing, this thing is well overdue. I've been looking for something like this since I was a kid. My wife said she wished she had more spiritual friends because mm. everybody's asleep, man. Nobody's awake out here. It's like one out of every 100 people are awake. Not well written. True. Not well read. Any, I don't care about no history. You need to be able to tell me what's going to happen when I die. I'm going to say this and I'm done. When I was a Christian, I used to bring people to Christ. And they used to always say this. They used to say, well, they always say we're going to heaven or hell, but nobody mm. ever knew what happened. Revelation mm. tell you specifically what happens in the end time, how... Uh, you know, it, it, he will be bound to the earth for a hundred years while the saints are in heaven, and then he will be on loose for a season, and then uh, the uh, the heaven will uh, descend down on the top of Mount Sinai, and then the devil will raise up his army, and they will mm-hmm. attack the city, and the fi- and the hellfire will rain from heaven and consume them. But you can find a hundred Christians that don't know what happens in the end. This is powerful. Because it lets you have an understanding to not fear death. We've been taught to fear death. But death mm-hmm. is actually death is actually freedom. You get nothing. That's right. That's you, right. You, you're you're done. 
Liberation, That's right. indeed. That's right. I'm, now, I'm not saying nobody need to kill themselves, but <laughs> when you go, when you go, you're gone. We sitting up here crying. I'm going to go to the funeral to pay my last respects. I'm gone. What you, you Give me my flowers while I can smell them. I don't, don't put it on my casket. I'm done. All right, my brother. Thank you once again yeah, for calling in, my brother. brother. Always a pleasure hearing from you, Guru, man. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Keep doing what y'all doing, man. Go ahead, take right, do your plug. This is the part of the show where you do your plug. Go ahead, do your plug. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, brother. Uh, Thank you for calling in. Hey, appreciate it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, brother. Yes, sir. This is what we thank everybody for who's out there, you know, that tuned in. Uh, you may not have uh, made a statement or you may not have asked a question. However, we do. Appreciate you for tuning in. Thank you so much. And hopefully something was said that uh, was able to help you to evolve. So as I, w- I left off at, uh, we are a tribal unity organization. We being my cousin, Joseph Andrew L., myself, Amar Mari, and Brother David Miller. And um, cousin, you also have a business. Brother David Miller, you have a business. Um, cousin, starting with you. Brother David, you'll end it, and then we'll close out from there, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Real quick, um, um, you can. Anybody has any questions right now? I'm only receiving questions or uh, anything that you need. I'm in the process of a few things going on in my life that I'm trying to make a few transitions. So, um, a few things going on. So, um, right now I can only uh, um, take on the um, uh, calls. If you have any questions, you can email me at New Life N U L Y F E Tools T O O L S at Gmail dot com. You can also um, um, hit me up on my Facebook page, um, uh, Yousef, Y-O-S-E-F, Indra, I-N-D-R-A-L-E-L. On Facebook, you can message me, friend me, whatever you want to do. But right now, I'm not making any jewelry right now for for a few months, and I will let it, the family know and everybody know uh, when I'm back on to the jewelry thing. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank Brother you, David. Yes, it's the Black Sheep on IG. Um, I also do videography and as major visibility. And I just want to say, when you do pray and you decide to ask for blessings, make sure your blessings that you ask for become a blessing that you can bless other people with. You might just get it faster. That's yes, sir. Yes, sir. That, that might be from uh, Black Jesus that gave me that one. I don't know where that came from, but that's answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Myself, Amar Amari, I am the founder of Tribal Union Organization, uh, you can reach me, um, A-M-A-R-E, A-M-A-R-I. You can reach me on Facebook by the name. On Instagram, it's Tribal Unity Organization. Um, on YouTube, it's Tribal Unity Organization. On Facebook, the same. We also have a page, the same. So once mm-hmm. again, we thank you. We appreciate you. I want to send love out to my queen that's on the line as well, too. She's always on here supporting us, so peace and blessings be upon my queen. She's one of my inspirations, so I have to honor my queen. We love you, brothers and sisters. Thank you once again for tuning in. Remember, every Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it is 218-339-6430, cold, 1122. Tune in. Peace. Peace. Peace.